Hi, my name is Emma. I'm a certified Dipsado specialist. And in today's video, we're going to go over some tips to do with Dipsado workflows. One of the things that I get asked is how do you start a workflow? And so there are different ways to do this. There are different ways to trigger a workflow to start. And one of them is through lead capture forms. So let's go into this lead capture form. And inside a lead capture form, there's two ways to do this. So if you go to your settings, you look here, you pick a workflow that corresponds to this lead capture inquiry process. So I have an inquiry workflow. Let's say that's what I wanted to do. So anytime someone fills out this form, either through the direct link or if I embed it on my website or somewhere, anyone who fills this out, Dipsado is going to not only create a new project for this client, it's also going to kickstart this workflow. So that work, that's one way to do it. The other way to start a workflow is through this block here called workflow. So this is a question with several answers. It's a drop down menu. And depending on what answer your, your lead selects, you can kickstart different workflows. So it could be this question here, what service are you interested? It could be another different kind of filtering question. And depending on what they select, you can have different workflows, let's say, um, an inquiry per uh, an inquiry workflow depending on what service they selected or it could even be like a workflow if they're not a good fit depending on what they selected or a workflow that makes you go in and have to manually go through the form to make sure they're a good fit and then one that's like automatically yes and you send them let's say the workflow sends them a schedule or appointment or something like that so in this question you can put answers that will either filter clients or sort them however you see fit and apply a workflow depending on what they select so let's say it's a branding client and then web design, like depending on what they select, you want to apply a different workflow. These obviously don't make sense, but just to show you how you would select it, then close. And you can add more, obviously. Like if you go here, you add another option and you select another workflow and you add that. So you can add as many as you want. And if you do this, I would recommend making this a required question so that they have to answer it. So it will force them down the different workflows that you select. So this is how you would start a workflow through a lead capture process. So the two different ways. The other way to start a workflow is through a proposal, but not just a proposal, it has to be a public proposal. So let's go into this sample proposal form here. So you'd come down here and make this public form and you would say yes here create a new project when this proposal is completed so anyone who fills this out regardless of if they're in your system or not Dubsado will create a new project for them so just keep that in mind when using this um, if you have another way that clients are coming in and you're also using a public proposal it might create like duplicates of your projects so just know that and then you're going to select the workflow that you want it to apply so everyone that fills this out is going to get a new project and they're going to go into this workflow that you selected. So that's how you would start a workflow using a public proposal. The other way to start a workflow is manually. So let's go to projects. So I have a sample client here. All you would do is basically go into the workflows. If they're at a stage where it makes sense, you would come in here and you would basically select and apply. That's all you would do. Depending on what kind of client process you have, sometimes you do need to trigger some workflows manually. So just know that this is how you do it. You just simply go into the project, go to workflows and select the workflow that applies and hit apply. And then it will start. As soon as I apply it, it's going to create this to do and notify me and do all these different things. The other question that I get is how do I create a new workflow? So there's two ways to do this. You can do it from scratch and you would simply come up here and click add a workflow, create a new, new workflow. You can select a payment plan from the list if it makes sense for this workflow, not all of them need it. And then you would add an action, let's say add a tag, do that, done. The other way to do it is to simply start by duplicating an existing workflow and adapting it to the client process that you need. So. The, the way you do that is you select the workflow that makes the most sense to duplicate and you simply click this copy button here and you can see that I've created an inquiry workflow copy down here. 
So you would just click the gear button and make whatever changes that you need. That would only apply to this duplicate workflow. The other question that I get is how do you know which clients are in which workflow? Like what is their status? So there's two ways to do this. You can do it at the workflow level. So you go to the workflow that you want to know. You click on the gear button and you click this workflow. I have one client in this workflow. They're active, you can see that. And they're, this is like pending, right? It's a to-do, so it's pending that. And then these will run immediately after this one is checked off. So that's how you can see it. The other way that you can see it is in each project. So if I go to the project, I can see where they're at also, right? View workflow, I see the same view. If you don't know which client is in which workflow, you can go to the workflow that you think they might be in, and then you can see all the clients that are under and what's their status. And you can see this legend down here, right? So this is completed in progress failed to run or deleted from a project. Like if you manually delete steps, they will still appear, but they'll be like X'd out there. The other question that I have got is what does update project workflow mean? So if you hit this edit button, you'll see this button here called update project workflow. And if I click it, you'll see this like scary sort of notification. Are you sure? Um, so what this does is basically if you've made edits to a workflow and you want those edits to apply to workflows that you have already applied to projects, workflows that are already running, this is how you would do it. But it's asking you, are you sure? Because it may cause some issues depending on what updates that you made to your workflow. So you can click apply changes or cancel. I'm going to hit cancel. So the way it works is that if you have added new steps to your workflow, those steps will be added to the end of the workflows that are already running. So depending on what steps those are, it may not make any sense to apply those at the end of the workflow that are already running. So the other thing is if you've edited some steps in a workflow, if those steps have already run in the project that has that workflow applied to it, it won't change those. If it's already run, those, those steps will not be updated. They won't run again. They're already done. And the other thing to know is that that update project workflow will appear no matter what. If there's no clients in this workflow, it's never been used, it doesn't matter. This notification is always going to pop up. So just keep that in mind. Um, there may be no one using this workflow. So don't worry in those cases. And you can check that by simply clicking view workflow to see who's running it. So I would, I just want you to understand what that is. I personally don't update it. I just let the people who are in a workflow run through it. But I understand like if there's something that's wrong with your workflow and you want to apply it to everyone that's already in it, this is one way to kind of bulk update all the workflows that are already applied to your projects. So that's it for today. These were just some questions that I've received about Dipsado workflow. So I thought I'd answer those questions for everyone. Um, if you have other questions or there are videos that you want me to make, feel free to write them in the comments below. And if you need help with your Dipsado setup, if you're struggling, you're stuck, feel free to reach out and book a call with me, the link below. And we can talk about what you need help um, and what it looks like to work together. So see you next time. Bye.